Ceramics were noticeably found in excavation sites and historical stations all over Cambodia. It was extremely popular since the prehistoric period. And until today, it is still proven to be very convenient for Khmer people on a daily basis. Generally, regardless of whether it is used for decoration or kitchenware, there are two types of ceramic, namely the earthenware and glazed version. To understand how ceramics are made in the modern world, the My to My News Media would like to divert the audience's attention to listen to our interview with Son Sai Han, who is now the owner of Morda Ceramic Shop in Siem Reap. My name is Son Siha. Currently, I am the founder of Murda Ceramics Shop. I was actually born in Kampung Chnang to a ceramic and pottery background family. I started to pick up the skill when I was young and continued to further my specialty in ceramics at the Royal University of Fine Arts where I was professionally trained by Japanese and German instructors. My journey as a porter first began in 2003 in my hometown, Kampung Chnang, as I began to help my family with creating ceramic wares. My family has a strong background in this profession as it was passed down by my grandmother for three to four generations already. Because of my love and passion for ceramic wares, I dedicated my life to perfecting and upgrading the quality of ceramics in Cambodia. That is when I decided to move to Siem Reap from Kampung Chenang province in 2015 where I have been running my own business. I aim for my products to be of quality and standardized to provide for the tourism and hospitality sectors. Moreover, I have innovated the classic ceramics into a glazed version which is higher in quality and more sustainable for everyday use. The glazed version requires an attentive amount of work. We have to double the heating process from 12 hours of 900 to 1000 degrees Celsius on the first try to 1300 degrees Celsius on the second heating. Furthermore, our shop has two types of ovens. The first kind of oven conventionally depends on burning wood to produce heat while the second type relies on gas. We build our own conventional oven by using locally sourced materials that we can find. However, we do have to buy foreign materials as well, like from Thailand, to build the gas oven for better insulation. On the other hand, the glazing process is particularly time-consuming after studying with foreign instructors from 2006 to 2008, I further self-studied and experimented with coloring and other techniques over the course of four to five years. Afterward, I still continued glazing and testing with other local ingredients such as ashes, limestones, and mountain stones even during my business journey. But most importantly, we have to be very cautious about the ingredients layered onto the ceramics before baking precisely at 1300 degrees Celsius to get that beautiful glazing effect. The only problem that we occasionally face is suddenly discoloration which is beyond our control. Due to the organic ingredients that we use, the ashes or wood would vary accordingly in their own natural setting. Therefore, the color would change suddenly corresponding to certain temperatures or environments. We bought dirt, particularly from Kampung Chnang and Bantisrai district in Siem Reap province, 
I usually bought a large amount of dirt from Kampung Chenang all at once due to long distance. And even though Bante Srei is nearby, the price is quite expensive. It demands commitment and time into making pottery. First of all, we would start by thoroughly mixing the dirt with water until it turned into paste. Next, the paste must be filtered to get rid of the remaining debris or stones. And we have to leave the paste for a bit longer before drying the mud under the sun. Finally, after the mud is quite dried, we will mold it and store it inside plastic bags, which will preserve the mud's condition for up to several months. Potters who are working at our place will receive payment according to their level of skill. Even beginners who are just starting will be provided with a monthly payment alongside ceramic training and professional porters will be paid in correspondence to their skill and work. So far, we have trainees from both the Bante Sarai district and the Kampung Chenang province. We also have recruitment opportunities for porters who are living in Kampung Chenang as well, for them to upgrade their skills and earn more for their respective families. Furthermore, our main priority is providing an opportunity in ceramic specialization for the poor or uneducated, hoping that they could make a living out of this expertise and extensively promote this skill to the next generation. At the same time, our Murada ceramic shop has pottery classes for tourists or individuals who would love to learn more about the art. Today, we have classes available for foreigners and especially Khmer people to promote the value and the commitment of ceramics. Usually, ceramic production would require a series of steps and hard work before reaching the final result. It involves multiple phases, including making clay, molding, sculpting, heating, and coloring to create a good-looking and standard ceramic. Moreover, we have been taking inspiration from ancient temples and replicating the statues of mythical beings in ceramic production. It is an act of preservation as well as an art to demonstrate to the next generation the beautiful and priceless legacies given by the Khmer ancestors. Finally, I would like to express my utmost gratitude to those who have been constantly supporting the Murada Ceramic Shop and the ceramic community in general. It has been a huge encouragement for us in conserving the ceramic culture in Cambodia and in the future. <laughs> Kun cerah 